Welcome to the Advice Show, Media with the Common Sense Approach. So some news just came out that Muhammad Ali has died at the age of 74. Now, Muhammad Ali was a champion in the ring and even more of a champion outside of the ring. Let's go ahead and roll the clip. From Parkinson's disease since being diagnosed in the 1980s, had been hospitalized with various ailments in the last few years, most recently this past week with respiratory issues complicated by his Parkinson's, a final battle the heavyweight champ was unable to overcome. He was born Cassius Clay in Louisville, Kentucky in 1942, beginning to box at the age of 12. He won an Olympic gold medal at the 1960 Games and went on to become a three-time heavyweight champion, brash and at times outrageous, boasting about his ability to float like a butterfly and sting like a bee, calling himself the greatest. And so many agreed, making him one of the most famous people on the planet. He joined the Nation of Islam in 1964 and changed his name to Muhammad Ali, defending his title against all comers until his conscientious objection to the Vietnam War and his refusal to be drafted cost him his title. He'd win it back two more times in his career, along the way fighting those famous battles with Frazier and Foreman, solidifying himself as a legend. In his later years, though weakened by Parkinson's, visibly trembling, he lit the cauldron of the 1996 Summer Olympics in Atlanta, another iconic moment, very frail in recent years. He nonetheless continued to make public appearances, always in good spirits. He is survived by his wife Lonnie and nine children. Again, the sad word tonight from Arizona, Muhammad Ali has died at the age of 74. Now, Muhammad Ali was one of the greatest fighters out there, hands down. Muhammad Ali's footwork, how he would just talk to people and get in their head, rope a dope. We know the iconic fights of Muhammad Ali, and it's something to be celebrated. But for me, Muhammad Ali was more inspirational outside of the ring. And after he had joined the Nation of Islam, Muhammad Ali became very outspoken at that point. And he started to stand up and speak out against the injustice that was happening to his community. He risked his championship belt. He risked his life. He risked his reputation and everything to speak up for his people. Even so much so that when they tried to draft him into a war, what did he tell them? I'm not going to fight no Viet Cong. What did they do to me? They not oppressing me. They not killing us in the street. They haven't enslaved us. What did the Viet Cong do? They're poor people. I'm not going over there to kill no poor people for no politicians. And he stood by that and he lost his belt and went to jail. A real man, a man that stands up on his principles. Look at these athletes today. They won't even do half of what Muhammad Ali has done. What comes to mind is Donald Sterling, how he was saying these things about he didn't want black people at the games. What did those black men do? They went on that court, played ball anyway. Their coach coached them anyway. Muhammad Ali wouldn't have done anything like that. What's even sad is that a lot of black men were supporting the Clippers players to go out there and play for a man who say he didn't want black people at the games. You rationalized it and say they got contracts and families and everything else. You think Muhammad Ali would have did something like that? No. And that's the biggest problem right now with black men in sports and outside of sports. You don't want to stand up for anything. You want to give excuses for cowardice. Muhammad Ali put everything on the line to stand up for his people. A lot of you won't even stand up for your own children. Forget the people. Some of you won't even stand up for yourself. Speak up for yourself. Because a lot of you would duck your head between your legs and go sit down somewhere. This is why it's gotten so bad for us in our community to the point that our women are getting killed now. Renisha McBride. Rakia Boyd. The situation happened with Sandra Bland. All these cases that we can keep talking about is because you don't speak up. You don't say anything much anymore. It's only a few that's doing it. Your sports players, you worry more about yourself and your money than the struggle of your people. All the people in Cleveland was asking LeBron James to say something about Tamir Rice to speak up, maybe boycott a game or something. No, what did he do? Put a statement out by his publicist and said, I don't know much about the case to even comment. 
You think Muhammad Ali would have did that, LeBron James? I lost so much respect for LeBron James when he said that crap. All these different cases is happening, and none of these sports players say anything. Actors, actresses, a lot of them don't say anything because they're worried about losing something. Muhammad Ali went to jail for what he believed in. You guys are afraid of losing a contract, losing an endorsement. This is why nobody respect a lot of black men in America. Because you're too scary to stand up for your own people and for yourself and for your children. Muhammad Ali would have never did anything like some of these sports players are doing now. You're scared to speak up about Trayvon, scared to speak up about Mike Brown, scared to speak up about Eric Garner. You don't, you don't say nothing. Oh, I made a tweet. Forget a tweet. Who cares? No, did you actually go out there and say something? Did you show your face? No, because you don't care. Gone are the days of black men like Muhammad Ali that will actually say something. And it's sad that we have these men just not here anymore. It's very, very sad. This is why we're so defeated a lot of times, because we don't have real men like Muhammad Ali anymore that have the influence and the finance to not only speak up, but back it up with his finances to help out different movements. Because, you know, actors and actresses may not spoke up, but it was helping. Like Harry Belafonte, he was an actor, and he greatly contributed to the civil rights movement in his voice and his finance. Yes, we know Jay-Z and Beyonce has uh, bailed out a lot of Black Lives Matter protesters. Yes, it has come out. Yes, we know Will and Jada had gave a substantial amount of money to the Million Man March last year. I know that I want to make sure to give them credit, but that's a small amount of people. When you have so many of you guys making uh, millions and millions of dollars, you know, LeBron James is worth $300 million. Drake is worth a hundred million dollars. You know, I can just keep calling off names between all these different people. You got uh, Puffy, you know, uh, uh, Dr. Dre, all these ones that's, that's making this money and they're not doing nothing for their community. Neither are they speaking up. They have so much money that it don't hurt them to speak up, but they don't want to do it because they don't care about black people like that. All they care about is themselves. You know, Muhammad Ali, if anything, he inspired me to speak up. He inspired me to be good at what I do and also outside of what I do. That is a real man to look up to, Muhammad Ali. Was he perfect? No, nobody's perfect. But one thing Muhammad Ali was perfect at is speaking up and having love for his people and not ducking his head when someone come against him about it. Black men, you need to return to the time of Muhammad Ali. Stop looking at the women, blaming the women and all this stuff. You're telling women 24 seven. That shows how much of a coward you are as well. You want to tell the women to straighten up. So you'll straighten up. Stop looking at the women and look to yourself. We are the ones that guide our community, not a bunch of women. You think Muhammad Ali have been begging women to change and have attitude and all this other stuff? No, you make the lead. You make the change. Stop looking for your excuses. We need to stand up for our community and be more like our brother Muhammad Ali. We want to say rest in power, Muhammad Ali. Um, you were a great fighter and also a great fighter within the community. It's sad that you're gone, but I hope a lot of people look into your life and be inspired to stand up and speak up once again, especially those who are in sports. Hit me up in the comments, use the commentaries, subscribe.